Greetings, everybody. I'm going to come at you with a little nugget video. And, uh, I don't know, maybe this might be a little mini-series or, or whatever regarding, you know, or maybe not. It might just be one video. I don't know. But it's just a little nugget, and I'm going to call this Sabbath Nuggets. <laughs> um, the reason why I'm going to call it Sabbath Nuggets is, uh, in this video, I'm just going to quickly focus on uh, a passage that is most commonly used to, um, debunk the notion of Sabbath keeping, if you will, or resting on this on the seventh day, which today would be our Saturday, you know, um, and it, it, it's, it's, it's really nothing, a lot of people make things, put things on themselves and make it seem more difficult than it actually is, and I think a lot of people kind of you know, misread things um, without kind of looking closely because they 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 listen to what other people tell them and they just go along with it instead of searching themselves. Um, you know, which which is fine. You know, we're you know we're all learning here and uh, and these types of things. But I want to go over Colossians two thirteen through seventeen, and I want to show you that. In this passage, it you know uh, when when it talks about the Sabbath, it's not talking about the seventh day Sabbath. And I'm going to prove that to you by looking at the Ten Commandments, the commandments of God, not man or Moses, but God, and show you that this is not talking about the seventh day Sabbath. Okay. So let's go ahead and read this. And it says, And you, being dead in your sins, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwritten of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us. We're going to get into that in just a moment here. And took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Now, was that the commandments that were nailed to the cross? Was that the commandments, the Ten Commandments that were done away with? Well, if that was the case, then there would be no need of a Savior there would be need there would be no need of forgiveness of sins because sin is transgression of the law which is transgression of the commandments of God okay and having spoiled principalities and powers he made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or the new moon or the sabbath days now this is this is interesting and we're going to get into this in just a moment as well which are a shadow of things to come but the body is of Christ now were the commandments of God a shadow of things to come or was it the Levitical Mosaic law that was a shadow of things to come there's a difference okay you know and Paul's writings can be a little bit you know, confusing at times because you know you'll hear him over and over again talk about the law but we, as uh, Bible students, I guess, if you will, you put it that way, we have to basically discern which law he's talking about here. Okay. Now, in the context, what do you see in regards to Sabbath days here? You see meat, drink, holy days, or feast days, or the new moons, or the Sabbath days, plural. Okay. Like with, uh, with the holy days or the new moons, you know, a lot, uh, some people... Consider the new moon a type of a Sabbath. The the holy days, like the Feast of Eleven Bread, there is a Sabbath in there, and these types of things. And this is what is talking about when it says, Let no man therefore judge you in these things, according to the Mosaic Law. Because you are not under the Mosaic Law anymore. The Ten Commandments are, are separate from the Mosaic Law. Okay? <clears throat> because this law is what is called the law of liberty. Let me give you an example. If everyone kept the Ten Commandments today, we would be at liberty, won't we? You would be able to, you know, leave money right outside your doorstep, right outside the... You can go to a, a convenience store and drop like $300 right, right in the center of the parking lot there and leave it for three or four days and come back, it'll still be there. Because no one would have taken it. Okay. So, you know, again, there's, there's a, 
there's a difference here. And we need to kind of realize what this difference is. <clears throat> now, some will have some will have you believe that, well, these were talking about pagans and, you know, uh, of other religious creeds and faiths that were uh, talking to the church in Colossia, you know, talking to the Colossians, try, you know, judging them that, hey, you're supposed to be doing our, our, our works, you're supposed to be doing our rituals, not the rituals of of the of the god of the jews or whatever but you're supposed to be a lot of people like to say that this belong that this passage was talking about those that are of pagan origin judging believers and regarding new moons holy days sabbaths meat and drink but no that that's not true either because it's only the levitical law the mosaic law the ceremonial law that was a shadow of things to come not pagan feasts not pagan rituals those weren't shadows of things to come. But it was the the priesthood, the priesthood, the sacrifices, the, the, the ceremonies, the rituals, all of these things were shadows of things to come, but the body is of Christ. So you can't say that, so that whole argument does not hold water at all. I'll give you another example. When you look at Acts, just to prove that there were Jews that were living outside of Judea at this time. Acts chapter 6, verse 8 and 9 says, And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines, and Cyrenians, and Alexandrians, Egypt, and of them of Cilicia, and of Asia, disputing with Stephen. So here were Jewish individuals from different parts of the Middle Eastern region, not just in Judea. So you can't sit there and say that this was just talking about pagan, you know, pagan worshipers and these types of things when it's talking about the Sabbath days and the meats are and drinks. This was explicitly referencing the handwriting of ordinances, the book of the law. Okay, the book of the law, the handwriting, not written by the finger of God, but the handwriting that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Which was, what was that? Well, that was the penalty of sin, which is death, and that's what that book of the law represented. Okay, that is what has been forgiven us through Jesus, through his death, burial, and resurrection. On that cross it's the sin debt not the law but the debt of it <clears throat> give you an example Deuteronomy 31 24 26 and it came to pass when Moses had made an end of writing the words of this law in a book this is what Moses wrote <clears throat> until they were finished that Moses commanded the Levites which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord saying take this book of the law and put it in the side of the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, that it may be therefore a witness against thee. Hold on, back up a little bit. <clears throat> Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us. Took it out of the way, nail it to the cross. Look at this again. Take this book of the law and put it in the side of the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God. What was in the Ark of the Covenant? The testimony, the tables of stone, totally separate from the book of the law. Granted, yes, the, the Ten Commandments are listed in Exodus 20 and Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 5, but if you look throughout Genesis and these types of things, you will see that these commandments weren't just commandments that were written on stone for a specific people. These were eternal commandments that were eternally kept. Abraham kept them. Okay. You look at Cain and Abel. Obviously, sin lies lies at the door. You know, Cain had a murderous mindset. He wanted to slay his brother. And he did. Okay. So, that's just a, perf a prime example that these laws... This royal law, which came from the the uh, 
which basically came from the um what's what's the, what's the word in acts um the dispensation of angels basically came down out of heaven was eternal these are eternal commands these are eternal commandments and what's talking about here in colossians 2 is not the sabbath day the seventh day or the eternal sabbath or has nothing to do with the seventh day the seventh day sabbath okay now again when you look at this here and look at this carefully in context let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of holy day or the new moon or the sabbath days now what i'm going to do here is i'm going to show you the sabbath commandments in both exodus 20 and deuteronomy 5 Uh, the Exodus 20 version reads, starting in verse 8, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Now, I just read the whole fourth commandment there. When you look at Colossians 2.16, do you see anything regarding meats or drinks or a holy day or feast day or the new moon? Do you see that in Exodus 20 in the Ten Commandments that were written by the finger of God? Do you see anything that resembles meats, drinks, new moons, uh, holy day, feast day observance or anything within these commandments? within this commandment no you do not hold on we have one more witness we have the Ten Commandments that are listed in Deuteronomy 5 so let's go ahead and read this one starting in verse 12 keep the Sabbath day to sanctify it as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God in it thou shalt not do any work thou nor thy son nor thy daughter nor thy manservant nor thy maidservant nor thine ox nor thine ass nor any of thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is that, that is within thy gates, that thy manservant and thy maidservant may rest as well as thou. And remember that thou wast a servant in the land of Egypt, and that the Lord thy God brought thee out thence through a mighty hand and by a stretched out arm. Therefore the Lord thy God commanded thee to keep the Sabbath day. Okay, now, this was the fourth commandment as listed in Deuteronomy 5. Back up again in Colossians 2.16. Do you see anything in the Deuteronomy 5 version that talks about meats or drinks or holy days or the new moons? Okay. So was this, was this talking about the seventh day Sabbath in regarding to the Sabbath day? No. Okay, this is talking about the ceremonial, ritualistic Sabbath that fell within the feast days that these proselytes were judging the Colossian believers that of what they should and should not observe in order to obtain their salvation, basically. And Paul was saying, don't let these people judge you in these things. For these were handwritings of ordinances that was against us. The seventh-day Sabbath was not a handwriting of ordinance. The seventh day Sabbath belongs in within the Ten Commandments which are eternal, which are eternal commandments that were not written by man. These were written exclusively with the finger of God. Okay? So this is definitely not talking about the seventh day Sabbath, but this is talking about the ceremonial Sabbaths that belong within that belonged within the Holy days, feast days, new moons, and these types of things, which were a shadow of things to come. So, Sabbath means rest. Shadow of things to come. People say Jesus is our Sabbath rest. Well, when you look in the aspect of the ceremonial Sabbath that fell within these laws and rituals that was in the book of the law, yes, Jesus is our Sabbath rest because we don't find rest in these handwriting in this handwriting anymore we find rest in Christ 
Hebrews 4 says, Therefore there remaineth a rest to the people of God. When you look at that word rest, it actually means a keeping of the Sabbath, keeping of the Sabbath day. So there is number two as far as rest. There is also a millennial Sabbath coming. That is at the end of 6,000 years when we reach the millennium. That will be the thousand year Sabbath. That is what we uh, strive for. That is what our sanctification process aims to is to enjoy that millennial Sabbath rest at the end of time. So there is a rest to come. There is a rest that is, which is the, in Christ. And then there is a keeping of the Sabbath day, which is just a simple day of rest. It's not that hard. As a memorial to creation, as, as well as a memorial of things to come. Okay. Now, again... When you look at this right here, for the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. Now, how can Jesus be the seventh day Sabbath if he created it? He, you know, he, <laughs> you, you can't be something that you create. <laughs> okay. It, it, it doesn't make sense. When, when, when did Jesus become a day of the week? All right. Now, <clears throat> for the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. Now, when you look at Exodus 20 and Deuteronomy 5, in fact, when you look at all the times that the capital L-O-R-D is mentioned in the Old Testament, you can kind of pretty much say that's Jesus Christ. Okay? The Son of Man is Lord, even on the Sabbath day. When you look at Exodus 20, verse 10, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. Lord of the Sabbath, Sabbath of the Lord, you see it? So who is the Lord? It's Jesus Christ, isn't it? All right. You know, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. For in six days, Jesus made heaven and earth. Lord, the Lord. Same thing here, Deuteronomy 5.12, or uh, 5.14, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. For the Son of Man is Lord, even of the Sabbath day. And the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. That's just a simple thing. Basically, it's also for our health, too. You know, I mean, you work seven days a week and stuff like that. Your body runs down. You're not able to function. You need that. You need a day of rest. Okay. You need that. So, you know, so again, I just wanted to clear up this whole thing about what Colossians 2 is talking about when it's uh, talking about the Sabbath days, especially in verse 16. So I hope this kind of helped. And uh, until next time, truth be told, truth be known, stay safe. God bless. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Today would be our Saturday, you know. Um, and it, it, it's, it's, it's really nothing. A lot of people make things put things on themselves and make it seem more difficult than it actually is. And I think a lot of people kind of, you know, misread things um, without kind of looking closely because they, they, they listen to what other people tell them and they just go along with it instead of searching themselves. Um, you know, which, which is fine. You know, we're, you know, we're all learning here. He made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Let no man therefore judge you in meat, or in drink, or in respect of an holy day, or the new moon, or the Sabbath days. Now, this is this is interesting, and we're going to get into this in just a moment as well. Which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Now, were the commandments of God a shadow of things to come? Or was it the Levitical Mosaic Law that was a shadow of things to come? There's a difference, okay? You know, and Paul's writing can be a little bit you know, confusing at times. Greetings, everybody. I'm going to come at you with a little nugget video. And, uh, I don't know, maybe this might be a little mini-series or, or whatever regarding, you know, or maybe not. It might just be one video. I don't know, but it's just a little nugget 
and I'm going to call this Sabbath Nuggets. <laughs> um, the reason why I'm going to call it Sabbath Nuggets is uh, in this video I'm just going to quickly focus on uh, a passage that is most commonly used to um, debunk the notion of Sabbath keeping, if you will, or resting on the, on the seventh day, which and the uncircumcision of your flesh hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwritten of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us. We're going to get into that in just a moment here. And took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Now, was that the commandments that were nailed to the cross? Was that the commandments, the Ten Commandments that were done away with? Well, if that was the case, then there would be no need of a Savior. There would be need, there would be no need of forgiveness of sins because sin is transgression of the law, which is transgression of the commandments of God. Okay. And having spoiled principalities and powers here, and uh, and these types of things. But I want to go over Colossians two thirteen through seventeen, and I want to show you that. In this passage, it you know uh, when when it talks about the Sabbath, it's not talking about the seventh day Sabbath. And I'm going to prove that to you by looking at the Ten Commandments, the commandments of God, not man or Moses, but God, and show you that this is not talking about the seventh day Sabbath. Okay. So let's go ahead and read this, and it says, "And you being dead in your sin." 